Ready? Good evening, everyone. Welcome to tonight's Common Council meeting. Before we start our meeting, we ask uh, our city clerk to read the quote for the week. Thank you. Christmas gift suggestions. To your enemy, forgiveness. To an opponent, tolerance. To a friend, your heart. To a customer, service. To all, charity. To every child, a good example. To yourself, respect. Thank you very much. Call the 18th regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Please call the roll. Boren? Here. Bauk? Here. Gisha? Here. Hannah? Here. Heidemann? Here. Kittleson? Here. Kleinus? Here. Manny? Here. Meyer? Here. Montemayor? Here. Rinfleisch? Here. Ryan? Here. Smith? Excuse. Vanderweel? Excuse. Verhasselt? Excuse. And Wangaman? Here. 13 present. Quorum is present. Alderman Kleinus, would you please lead us in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman McLeanus. Next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Motion and second to approve minutes. Under discussion. There being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Mayor's appointments. Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. Tuger Lee to be appointed as Information Technology Director commencing December 18, 2007 and expiring December 17, 2012, signed by the Mayor. And I would ask for a motion to uh, suspend the rules. Norman Gisha. I move we uh, suspend the rules uh, on this uh, nomination and act. Is there, is there a second? Second. Any uh, opposition to that? There being none? Yes. You're opposed to suspending the rules? Yes. We will call a vote on the suspension of the rules. Okay. And I vote would be to suspend. suspend. Bauk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? No. Kleinus? No. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? No. And Wangaman? No. Oh. Alderman. Eight eyes and four. I'm sorry, and Alderman Foran. <laughs> Nine <laughs> eyes and four no's. Is there enough? Nope. No, it's not enough? Nope. Rules cannot be suspended. We need how many votes? Twelve. We need twelve need votes. Yep. Okay. The, uh, <clears throat> for Mr. Tuber Lee, who was present here, the uh, the motion was to suspend the rules. Generally, appointments lie over. That means they would have lied over for a week or for the, until the next meeting. Uh, in this case, the council elected not to suspend the rules. We needed 12 votes. There wasn't enough votes, which means your appointment now will lie over till the next council meeting. Okay. Please continue, Attorney McLean. Susan Hart to be appointed as Director of Human Resources and Labor Relations commencing January 1, 2008 and expiring December 31, 2012. Signed by the Mayor. That lies over. Anything else? Oh, no. oh uh, yes. Um, <clears throat> this is dated December 3, came in at the last council meeting. The uh, list of election inspectors for all elections in 2008. Signed by the Mayor. Need a motion to confirm? President Hanna. Mr. Mayor, I would make a motion to confirm those appointments. Second. Motion and second. <clears throat> Under discussion. Alderman Kittleson, did you wish to some, say something? Oh, sorry about that. Alderman Clayton. Thank you, Your Honor. I just want to thank these citizens for doing this work. It uh, takes a lot of time, and I appreciate their interest in serving the city. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? There is none. Please call the roll. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayonis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warren? Aye. And Bauk? Aye. 
13 ayes. Motion carries. Uh, at this time, we have a proclamation that is a, um, sort of like a, a surprise. And I would ask uh, Deputy Chief Steve Sharp to come up. Good evening. Good evening, Mayor. I met Deputy Chief Sharp a long time ago, I believe around 2000, when he was selling ice cream at the first Hispanic Fest. He's a better deputy chief than he was an ice cream seller. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that true? Yes, it's true. And since, this, since then, I have been very impressed with the work that he's done, the, the, the incredible commitment, the heart, the soul that he has given to not only the fire department, but to our entire city. And he's, ended, he's added a, a big plus to the public protection and safety that we provide to our citizens. And for that, we will always be grateful. As you know, Deputy Chief Sharp was one of the, uh, the few that elected to retire. And as he leaves, he leaves a, a, a big void here uh, in, in the fire department and in the city of Sheboygan because we will truly miss your, your commitment, your dedication, and your skills and the spirit that you brought to our whole city. Deputy Chief Sharp. Whereas Deputy Chief Sharp was hired by the City of Sheboygan Fire Department in March 1997, 1977, promoted to Lieutenant in January 1990, promoted to Shift Commander in June 1993, and was promoted to Deputy Chief in April of 1998, and whereas during his tenure with the City of Sheboygan Fire Department, Deputy Chief Sharp has been involved in many major projects and has ensured that they have been completed in the most efficient and cost-effective manner. And whereas under Deputy Chief Sharp's leadership, the city has successfully acquired more than half a million dollars in federal grant monies to use in the purchase of equipment, apparatus, and communications. And whereas under Deputy Chief Sharp's guidance as a project manager, fire station number five was constructed, fire station number one was remodeled, and the training storage building at fire station three was constructed. And whereas Deputy Chief Sharp has always strived to be an effective public employee by working to save the taxpayers' money while providing the best quality of service and equipment. And whereas Deputy Chief Sharp is retiring from the city at the end of 2007, and he has a smile on his face, <laughs> now therefore I, Juan Perez, by the virtue of the authority vested in me as the mayor of the city of Sheboygan, do hereby extend my personal thanks and congratulations and those of the entire city to Deputy Chief Stephen W. Sharp, and I urge our council as well as all our citizens to extend their thanks to him also. Deputy Chief, thank you very much. We will miss you. Thank you, Mayor Perez, honorable council people, and citizens of Sheboygan. It truly has been an honor to do what I've done for the past 31 years, to serve in this capacity for the past 10 years as deputy chief of this department. I used to be able to say that I bought everything from paper clips to aerial ladder trucks, and now with the events of the past two years, I can extend that to new fire stations and to set up an ambulance service, something that's going to be the great benefit for this city that we believe it can, I know it can. But I'm only one part of a team. We're all on this team together. Mayor Perez, council people, past mayors and council people, you always believed in us as fire administrators and supported our projects with your vote. And that's what's important. We work together, we get the job done. To my wife, Lori, you taught me how to shop. <laughs> To my son, Peter, and his wife, Jenny, you've been behind me all the way. You've always supported me in my career. I appreciate it. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you again, Deputy Chief Sharp. Next item on the agenda is uh, comments by Oliver, Alderman Bauk. Thank you, Your Honor. Let me I'm gonna follow that act, though. Uh, I'd just like to take a minute. Uh, we have a lot to be thankful for here, uh, and, and not the least of which are these sons and daughters of Sheboygan County that are out serving their country uh, and won't be home this Christmas. So uh, uh, as we 
uh, as we go into the, the Christmas season or the holiday season with our, our, our warm council chambers and our, our warm shopping malls and our festive get-togethers with our family, just want the people of Sheboygan County to know that we're also thinking about and praying for uh, those young people that are out uh, on ship, the bridges of ships and cockpits of airplanes and tents in Iraq and all those places. So God bless them and thank you for their service. Thank you very much, Elman Bout. And I believe you've, uh, you've stated uh, very eloquently how the, the entire council and the city of Sheboygan feel about our servicemen and women. Appreciate that. Next item is public forum. Madam City Clerk. First on the list will be Dulcy Johnson. Dulcy, can I have your home address, please? 1306 North 3rd Street, Sheboygan. You will have five minutes. Okay. Mayor Perez and members of the council, when I spoke at the public forum two weeks ago, I asked two questions. When did the council authorize the mayor to explore extending ambulance services <coughs> to municipalities and towns outside the city of Sheboygan? When did the council authorize the fire department to operate three ambulances full time with a fourth on standby? I still don't have any answers, but now I have another question. Who authorized the fire chief to negotiate for ambulance services to the town of Wilson? I was astounded to attend the county board law committee meeting on December 6th and find them discussing and acting on the Sheboygan Fire Department's plan to provide service to a portion of the town of Wilson when this council has not spent one nanosecond discussing that. How did the issue get on the law committee agenda before it was even presented to this council? I can only postulate that this was accomplished with the full knowledge and cooperation of the mayor and Chief Lestusky. Mayor Perez was in attendance at the law meeting, committee meeting, along with Council President Alderman Hanna and Alderman Montemayor, who I believe is a council representative on the EMS Council. All of them knew full well that the issue had never been discussed by the council, and none of them objected to what was transpiring. I can only conclude that they were in cahoots with Chief Letusky and pushing ahead with their agenda with no regard for any established procedures. I cannot believe that the mayor or any council member would abrogate their responsibility to their constituents in this manner. Instead of the council directing the fire department, the fire department has been calling the shots. It was a pleasant surprise to have three council members rebuff this steamroller movement by calling a three-man hold at Tuesday's special council meeting to let the mayor and Chief Lestusky know that the council is the governing body of the city elected to represent the people. As I said two weeks ago, the situation has been out of control. The fire department has been running the show. It goes back to the beginning when the plan was to hire four paramedics to operate two ambulances. Suddenly, instead, the fire department promoted six firemen paramedics and hired four new firemen, although Chief Letusky had agreed to a hiring freeze for firemen. No response from the council. Although the plan was to operate with 18 paramedics, that number suddenly grew to 24. No response from the council. Chief Letusky decided to operate three ambulances instead of two. No response from the council. Suddenly, last Tuesday night, Alderman Wangaman, Bourne, and Clyunas put an end to this sequence of events so that the council can take control of the situation. This is that magical time of the year when that fat bearded man in a red suit slides down the chimney and leaves presents for good children. The taxpayers of the city of Sheboygan cannot afford to play Santa Claus to the residents of the town of Wilson, which is what will happen if you allow the fire department to extend ambulance services to a portion of the town of Wilson without annexation. I could not understand, indeed I don't think people in the town of Wilson could understand, why the city of Sheboygan would contract for ambulance services with the town of Wilson at the same rates that the city of residents of the city would pay. Fortunately, the Finance Committee realized this, too, at their meeting last Monday night when they discussed the rates proposed by the Fire Department. The taxpayers have already unnecessarily invested over $900,000 to replace an ambulance service that provides excellent service and has been free to the taxpayers. Some months ago, the Council voted to transfer $300,000 for startup costs, and two weeks ago, you voted to borrow $624,482 for ambulances and related equipment per document 1624. 1625. I presume that part of the $300,000 was for the cost to the department for the wages of the firemen who participated in the ride-alongs in Fond du Lac and Manitowoc, because these men surely were not on site for firefighting duties when they were riding along in Fond du Lac and Manitowoc. 
Chief Lestusky was quoted in Wednesday's press that the city would bring in approximately $25,000 in answering emergency calls to the town of Wilson. That's about one-third of the yearly salary, bonus pay, and benefits of one fireman paramedic, and it takes two fireman paramedics to staff an ambulance. And that doesn't consider any of the operational or startup costs. Your constituents, the taxpayers of this city, will subsidize the rest of the costs involved. Methinks the financial gurus at the fire department need to run the numbers again. $25,000 will not reduce anyone's taxes by one cent. Is it really worth it? Of course, Chief Lestusky considers the town of Wilson a foot in the door. His exact words at the Finance Committee meeting last Monday night. He is fully intent on competing with Orange Cross however he can. Government should not be doing what the private sector can do. Indeed, I also learned from the story in the press that, per Chief Lestusky, the fire department has planned from the start to expand ambulance service to additional municipalities. When did he share that information with the council? I do not remember any such discussion when the original plan was presented. And I wonder how many aldermen who voted for the original plan would have done so knowing that the fire department's plan was to subsidize ambulance service for other Excuse municipalities. Me, Delcy, would you like your additional minute? Please. Okay. Another reason why more discussion was needed before the council voted on the issue. As I stated two weeks ago, the extension of ambulance service outside the city should be only permitted through annexation. Your constituents cannot afford to subsidize ambulance services for entities outside the city. Your constituents want open and honest government. When elected officials abuse their office, as some of you have, you lose the public's trust. It appears that the mayor and Alderman Hanna and Alderman Montemayor have been complicit in allowing Chief Lestusky to proceed with his plan without council authorization and then expect the council to acquiesce. Let us hope that the council puts a stop to this kind of activity and demands that established procedures be followed in dealing with issues. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Next on the list is Jack Wirtz. Mr. Wirtz, can you give me your home address, please? 47 Winnebago Place. And you will have five minutes, sir. Mayor Perez, council members, fellow citizens of Sheboygan. I am speaking tonight on behalf of the Sheboygan County Taxpayers Alliance. What I have to say is simply this. No annexation to the town of Wilson, no city services for the town of Wilson. Why should the people of the town of Wilson enjoy what we have here in Sheboygan provided by city of Sheboygan taxpayer dollars. When we were serviced by the private sector, namely Orange Cross Ambulance, no taxpayer dollars were used to support this service. The service was paid for by the user. If that was not good for us, how can it be good for the residents of the town of Wilson? The cost of the fire department buildings, equipment, and personnel is being borne by the city taxpayers. The only cost to the town of Wilson residents would be when the service is actually used. All other costs will be borne by the city of Sheboygan taxpayers' expense. That is what we had prior to the change that will take place on 1 January of 2008. Where will this end? Will this offer be made to other areas too? Has this offer already been made to other areas? We here in the city have elected representatives to serve us, not the entire county. That is the responsibility of the county board, not the city of Sheboygan Common Council. When our elected representatives are not part of the decision making in this issue, we are being denied the right to be heard through our duly elected older persons. Is this right? We think not. It isn't like the area involved will be without ambulance service. Orange Cross is perfectly capable of providing this service as they have been doing for years. Over the years, it has been said by your predecessors in office that this is a strong council, weak mayor system of government. In our opinion, this was meant to be 
that the decisions for this city are made by the majority of the elected alder persons, not by one person or perhaps a small segment of like-minded individuals. If things like this are to be ignored and like occurrences continue, woe be it for the taxpayers of Sheboygan. Thank you. Next will be Don Cook. Don, can you give me your home address, please? 921 Dillingham Avenue. You will have five minutes. Thank you. I would like to thank the mayor and the members of the Common Council for giving me this opportunity to speak. Tonight, I would like to address a new issue that will be referred to the Public Protection and Safety Committee tonight as item number 1824. The issue revolves around the use of ATVs on city sidewalks. I have a neighbor that is kind enough to clear the snow from the alley on our block with a plow that's mounted on the front of his pickup. He also likes to clear the snow from the sidewalks on our block with a plow that's attached to his ATV. He does an excellent job. The corners are cleared, which makes crossing the street easier. We live a block from Farnsworth, and we have plenty of pedestrians using these sidewalks and crossings. He does this out of kindness and does not ask for compensation. Last week, the police informed him that his ATV use for clearing the sidewalks was not legal, as there is a city ordinance that prohibits driving ATVs on the sidewalks. I feel there is nothing wrong with using an ATV on the sidewalk, provided you're using it for a purpose such as snow blowing. <coughs> there is really no difference than using a plow or a snow blowing attachment on a garden tractor or riding lawnmower, yet these are legal. Although I understand the need for an ordinance to prohibit the use of ATVs on city sidewalks for joy rides, it should be legal to use one for a constructive activity such as snow removal. Thank you and have a wonderful holiday. Thank you. And last we have Dick Susha. Dick, can I have your home address, please? 15 North Point Drive, Sheboygan. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. Mayor Perez and Common Council, I addressed this council when you began discussions of the ambulance service in our fire department and urged you to delay action until there was sufficient public input. Well, you chose not to follow my advice and ignored it, and only after you took action did you learn of the overwhelming wishes of our citizens that ambulance services remain with Orange Cross. You failed to adhere to one major caveat of local government. That is that a city should not assume a service which is already being provided well and at no cost to the taxpayer. You all realize that deep down that private service can do the job and maybe even better. I told you then that we are our brother's keepers. But I didn't mean that we should embrace our surrounding towns with the city service. When a private contractor was more than willing to provide a quality service. What is the incentive for annexation? Will we provide police and fire protection next? How about city water and snow plowing? Do you think that $25,000 in additional revenue from the town is going to make our system a profitable venture? I think not. That's a drop in a bucket. This seems like a desperate attempt to make an unprofitable venture into a profitable one. Why the rush? Shouldn't we walk before we run? We have no history of revenues. We have just projections. And don't forget the 52% uncollectibles. Does this include some from the town of Wilson? 
I know that in the past several firemen have incurred serious injuries assisting Orange Cross personnel. Some have incurred workmen's compensation losses, which were paid by the city of Sheboygan taxpayers in excess of six figures. Any such losses in the town of Sheboygan will quickly eradicate any additional revenue. If I were an alderman, I would hate to explain to my constituents that their tax dollar was being used to pay for an injured fireman supplying a service to the town of Wilson. If you choose to extend city services into surrounding towns, maybe now is the time to consider regional government. One fire department, one police department, one park department, one ambulance department, the list goes on and on. I know that's a lot to swallow at one time, but you must consider this if you consider to make the city residents less attractive by providing city services to the towns. Furthermore, one last question that no one has addressed, and it's important. Will the revenues collected by the Sheboygan Fire Department for Ambulance Service have an adverse impact on the formula used to determine our shared taxes that we get from the state government. If that's the case, then we surely aren't ahead. This is a major issue. Don't ram it through. Your constituents are watching and are concerned. Try listening to them. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. <clears throat> Thank you to all those that addressed the council tonight. Next item on the agenda is the mayor's comments. I've got some, um, just some brief comments on confidential matters, uh, some council comments about the year as we approach 2008, and uh, some holiday wishes. The confidential matters, I simply wanted to point out to the council that the Sheboygan Code does call for confidentiality of issues and matters that are discussed in confidence that they be maintained confidential. Uh, it's difficult sometimes to, to answer questions uh, in, in a manner that releases public information. Sometimes we just, it just slips out. Uh, it could be a, very, uh, a number of reasons why, but I would, I would caution you that in, in particular closed sessions, when you have closed sessions in the Common Council and the committees, that any, anything that's discussed in, in closed session uh, remains in closed session. Uh, and there's reasons for that. Uh, uh, at times, people criticize that uh, we're withholding information for, from the public. Uh, no, you're not. The statute perfectly allow that uh, to happen, and there's good reasons for that. Otherwise, a lot of issues couldn't be discussed uh, uh, in, in the candid manner that they are, and a lot of these issues are, are preliminary, uh, not definitive. So there's a buried, uh, uh, there are varied reasons as to why confidentiality is uh, is important, and <clears throat> I simply just wanted to point that out because there's, there's a couple of instances that, that have, have occurred, uh, and one of them dealt with an email that was floating around with respect to a strip of land uh, at the police station uh, connecting the the county property, and I'm not going to read all the email because that's not important. But I think it, it touches on the issue of the, the release of confidential information. Uh, and there's a quote here where, where the person emailing is, is saying, I know the information is correct as it was given to me by an alderman who was there. And that is referring to a closed session meeting that we had. Uh, they even almost verbatim quote an alderman. And I will say the name in this case because and these are in bold, meaning I know that to be a fact. Uh, Alderman Montemayor, whom I was told was the one who told the rest of the aldermen at this meeting to keep it quiet or something to that effect. That's too close for comfort. I mean, that somebody was in listening and somebody felt that they could say that. Uh, Alderman Montemayor, if she said that, did nothing wrong. Uh, aldermen are always cautioning each other to keep things in confidence that are meant to be in confidence. And just recently, an article... Uh, in the press, as Fence case finally settled between city, uh, and, city and resident, uh, it, it talks about uh, 
uh, the city attorney declined to reveal the amount of the settlement uh, because it was, it was confidential. But a source with knowledge of the situation said the common council meeting in closed session last month approved a payment of up to $15,000. True or not, it, it's information that somehow was, was obtained by the, the press and in other instances by other people. And, and uh, I simply just want to impress upon you the importance of those confidential <laughs> matters that are discussed in, in confidence, uh, in particular in closed sessions, that, that they stay here. Uh, if there's any blame to be taken, I'll take, I'll take the blame too because I really respect that confidentiality, that nature of that confidentiality of our, of our discussions in, in, in those sessions. So again, just point it out because it's been twice within a short period of time that these issues have come up. The, uh, the other uh, matter that I wanted to simply talk about is the two, 200, two, 2008 council matters. And I'll talk a little bit about, uh, about uh, ourselves and, and a little bit about the, uh, our, our new initiative with the Firebase Ambulance, and then I'm going to ask Sheila Lastusky to, to come up and just give you a quick update, and then I'll continue with my comments. But we represent 16 wards. All of you represent 16 wards. That's the whole city of Sheboygan. There's eight districts, two of you per district, 16 wards. You represent a cross-section of, of the community. You represent the pulse, the blood, the heart, the soul of the entire community. People place a lot of trust, a lot of faith in you to make good decisions. Some of those decisions are not going to be aligned with all of us, and we've had our share of that this year. But all of us have been in a position to respect that. Uh, our constituents, uh, perhaps District 1 to District 8, will give different opinions of, of one issue where a constituent or a group of constituents may tell the alderman in District 1, I hope you vote for it, and the other ones are telling, I hope you don't vote for it. So there, right there and then, you've got an automatic, inedible uh, conflict, so to speak. But they all want the same thing. And we have an incredible uh, amount of skill, intelligent people in this council, and, and I, I really believe that because I've seen you at work, I, I've seen you speak, I've seen you conduct yourselves, and, and we have the skill and the talent to keep moving this community in a positive, positive direction. We're not perfect. I'm not perfect. Nobody's perfect. But all of us, all of us want what is best for Sheboygan. And trying to reconcile our different approaches, approaches is, is not an easy thing. But at some point, we all come to terms, and at least there's a majority that we can all agree to move in one direction. And that's where it gets a little tricky, because when we decide that, and someone did not vote or support that position, there's outside political forces prodding to, to instigate uh, 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 contention. Uh, and, and we need to be very careful and mindful that we're here to represent the community. And if the council has decided, it would be a good thing for us to say, the council has decided, let's move forward in a positive direction. That doesn't mean you forfeit, you waive, and you throw away all your debate. Uh, and all your, all your input. It just means that a majority of the council has the power to decide the direction of this community, and, and that's the way things are. And, and as we move into 2008, we have some challenges. We have some great challenges. Uh, we're, we're going to be looking at some very, very difficult things to, uh, to do. Uh, we know, at least I know, that there, and we live in a time that there's no, no easy answers. There are none. Sometimes there's no answer at all. And for some people, no answer is good enough. And that's what we're confronted with. We have to use our heart, our mind, our soul to say, I believe this, I need to vote this way, and this is the way I'm going to vote. And then you live with those consequences. I also know, and I believe you know, that we live in a time now where everything we do is going to be scrutinized, carefully almost microscopically scrutinized. Everything you do and everything you say, somebody's going to be listening and watching and trying to turn that thing around and put a spin on it that they want to put a spin on. And we also live in a time where people can basically say anything they want. And that's nothing new. That's been going on for years. That's what's called freedom of speech. People can say anything they want. But that doesn't make it true. It just means they can say what they want. And you always need to be mindful of that and, and consider the source. We have an instance today where, uh, and I'm leading into the asking Chief Lastusky to come up, but not quite yet, Chief, where, where we have heard some comments about Chief Lastusky. Well, counsel and public, I'll tell you one thing. Chief Lastusky is one of the most 
respected man in this community. I respect him. He's got strong, strong integrity, commitment, and dedication. And it hurt my heart to see him punished and bashed out in the public by some people. It breaks my heart to see that. But he's a strong man, and he's done what I've been advised to do. Have a thick skin. <laughs> I've got it, folks, believe me. And it's not a bulletproof vest, it's thick skin. But it breaks my heart to hear people speak of Chief Latusky in a manner that demeans him or, pu or puts him in, 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 in a situation that's not true. And again, people are free to say what they want. It doesn't necessarily make it true. And the problem here is that when people don't have the correct information, for the most part, they make it up. And they connect dots that aren't there. And it's usually, usually juicy stuff that it creates more, more feedback on that part. But we've had some comments today made. The council's out of control. Abuse of power. There's no abuse of power here. There certainly is no council out of control. You need to be commended for the positions that you've taken. I've seen a lot of you take different positions, and yet you come back here the next time around, and I see you all talking to each other and having a blast. Some of us take it a little better than the other ones, but after two or three weeks, everything's back to normal, everything's lovely, and we're back to conducting business the way we should be. The, the other thing that, that I've heard is the, uh, that we're in cahoots. Ah, it's relative. Depends on how you define cahoots, because we are supposed to be cahooting because we want to come to consensus and make decisions that are good for the community. We're supposed, that's what we're here for. Not all of us can't be in cahoots. I wish there were, but not all 16 agree on everything. But cahoots, in the way it's, it's put out, no, this council and no one is in cahoots with anything. We all have a check and a balance. In, instituted in the process and the policies that we have in place to make sure that doesn't happen. The other thing that I heard is that um, why should the town of any town, town of Wilson, town of Sheboygan, benefit from what the taxpayer pay for? They already do. They already do. Guess why they want to live outside? They don't have 200 and two miles of street to maintain and reconstruct and pave and clean leaves and clean snow. They don't have over 20-something parks. They don't have 479 employees to pay for. They don't have a fire department to pay for. They don't have a police department to pay for. They don't have one of the biggest Department of Public Works to pay for. We do. We pay for it. When they come into town, just like somebody from Milwaukee, guess what? They're taking advantage of what the taxpayers are paying. They can go to our parks. If they're in an accident, they call the police. They call the fire. When they go to work, when they come visit, they drive on our streets. If they have an accident, break down a traffic light, so they broke a traffic light. So the argument that they're getting something that the taxpayers are paying for, they already are. They already are. That's just the way it's set up. When we go to Madison, when I go to Madison, that argument could be put out there to me. The mayor from Sheboygan is taking advantage of what we're paying for here in Texas. Yes, I am but it works that way in our whole country, not just in Sheboygan. So again, be mindful of the source, be mindful of the position. We are here to make decisions, we make them, and then we move on. And at this point, I'd like to, before I continue with my, with my comments here, I'd like to ask uh, Chief Lastuski to, to step up and just give us an, an update of where we are, and then I have uh, 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 some additional comments to make on that. Chief? Thank you, Your Honor, uh, members of the council. Um, I've handed out a packet of information to all of you. Um, some of you have been privy to some of this information because you've taken the time to contact me and um, continually <coughs> ask questions as we've gone through this ambulance process, and I certainly welcome that and continue to welcome that in the future. Others have been privy to some of this information based on uh, whatever committees you're on. Uh, some of the information has been discussed in salary grievance, public protection, safety, and finance. It's not always shared in, in all the different committees. It's kind of specific to 
um, what the information is. There's a couple things um, I wanted to accomplish tonight, um, and I'm going to try to keep my um, my thoughts and and comments to the information that I've provided. Um, it's all I can say up front is that our department, our staff, and our firefighters have um, worked tremendously hard in the last seven months since the council made a determination to move forward with this ambulance service. And um, I am 100% convinced that uh, the city will be proud. Um, we will be effective, efficient, cost effective, and profitable in our venture and provide a tremendous service to the city. There's a couple things I'd like to read for you. Um, one of the, the frustrations is the fact that misinformation can be given out at any time, at any place, and um, it seems to spread like wildfire. I have to tell you, quite frankly, I can count on one or two hands at the most the number of times I've been contacted um, by the public asking me questions about this ambulance service over the last seven months. I'm in the office, as most of you older persons can attest, most every day, and I've always answered every call that's come to me um, from friends and foes alike in this issue and have been more than willing to have people come in. And I know there's older persons that have brought a few people in that have told, been in total disagreement, and we've, we've spent hours discussing this issue. So I've... Uh, never backed off, nor has my staff on doing that. I like before I get into the information I provided. I'd like to read a couple things to you. Um, the Sheboygan Fire Department shall place in service a minimum of three paramedic level ambulances to be staffed 24 hours a day, seven days a week, which shall be dedicated to the city of Sheboygan in order to provide the same or better, better level of services as previously provided. That is in the resolution passed by this council. Three ambulances in the city of Sheboygan responding. As part of our plan, we also included a reserve ambulance unit to ensure that we have appropriate backup coverage if there's a maintenance issue or otherwise. We're very fortunate in the fact that, that uh, the funding for that ambulance was uh, donated through the Landmark Construction Team and Joseph Schmidt and Sons Construction and we were able to find a very high quality used ambulance that assists us in that. So three ambulances was part of the resolution with a backup ambulance as part of the funded first year costs which ended up being removed from the budget for this upcoming year because of the don donation. The operational plan upon request shall be adjusted to accommodate requests from communities being served by the current provider as listed in the county EMS plan, which include, but shall not be limited to 911 responses and interfacility transports. That too is in the initial resolution passed by this council um, back in the end of May. So just a clarification when people speak, um, there has been information provided, the council has given direction, and that information is there for all to see. I'd like to move on to um, the information that I'm providing tonight, and I think it's very positive information for both this council, the city, the community, and uh, for the fire department as well. Um, we are ready to go with the ambulance service starting January 1st. We are fully equipped. We have a few uh, little bits of fine tuning to do over the next few weeks. Um, but uh, uh, as any of you who had an opportunity to see the ambulance out in front tonight, or if you haven't had a chance to, um, you're welcome to come into the fire station. We've got a very quality pieces of equipment that our people will be responding and protecting the city of Sheboygan. Uh, the process is moving forward very positively. At this time, we've hired four new firefighter paramedics as identified in the ambulance plan. And one of those four was actually a vacant position in our table of organization, but four were identified as being hired for that plan. We've also hired, we've had six retirees since August of the year 
and we've hired five replacements for those retirees. Through an agreement with the mayor and the common council, we've agreed to delay the hiring of that sixth individual until spring for budgetary purposes. Um, that brings the total of paramedics at this time, at the end of the year, to 20 within our department. Uh, it should be 21 in spring, up to a maximum of 24, as uh, agreed to in a tentative agreement that this council agreed to, not 54. The new hires that we've, we've hire, hired and brought in have uh, brought in an incredible amount of it in experience and enthusiasm dedication and spirit that's spreading throughout our department. Um, I've included the profiles of all the paramedics that you, um, you see, both the ones that are currently with our department and new ones that have been added. There's a cumulative 135 years of paramedic experience um, with those individuals, plus many, many countless more years of fire and EM, other EMS um, backgrounds on these individuals as well. Um, we've been training the nine new hires in firefighting. Um, that process goes on um, anytime we hire a new firefighter. Um, over the course of a year's time, they, they complete a probationary process. And, uh, and that process uh, um, is a step process that goes on throughout the year. Um, we've been able to bring in people from Orange Cross Ambulance Service, which were high-level people that have a great understanding of the service. We brought in people from other fire departments that have backgrounds in fire-based uh, fire ambulance, and uh, we've been able to utilize their backgrounds and experience to blend with our current experience to make our service uh, even better than what we had imagined. Um, our line personnel and some of the new personnel have been working in both hospitals with the emergency room staff to improve and work on their, their clinical skills. And there's been great, great cooperation from both hospitals in working through that process. Our paramedics who've had less field experience or not uh, as much recent field experience, however, totally qualified, have done uh, refresher training with the Manitowoc and Fond du Lac Fire Departments um, to just bring them back to, the, uh, to, to their skill level that's appropriate. And uh, we will be completing those at the end of this year. And from that point on, they will, they will uh, be able to work on our ambulances and provide that great level of experience to our people. Uh, we've also worked with uh, Police Department Dispatch um, the IT department and engineering department to make the necessary changes for a smooth transition in both dispatch and mapping and all the other areas that support our ambulance and fire service. Here's another important point I'd like to get to. Our vehicle and equipment purchases are near complete. There's a few odd items that we need to, to, to put together yet um, to get us ready to go. I've heard all sorts of numbers thrown around as far as what the cost to the taxpayers uh, have been, but I will tell you this. There's $540,000 identified for a lease program for ambulances and equipment. We will be under that $540,000, very near that number, to fully equip four ambulances um, ready to go, and that includes monitors, full equipment, and these are state-of-the-art ambulances. The positive news is there has also been $200,000 that has been put in a startup fund for personnel costs for 2007. There's also been $100,000 in the startup costs for, for 2007 for equipment. We have not touched either of those accounts, nor will we need to utilize those accounts to start our ambulance services. And remaining costs are included in our 2008 budget. So I think um, the, the council and the community should know that we've been very diligent in what we've done to this point and very conscious of the costs involved with this in order to provide a cost-effective 
and excellent service. So I think that needed to be said. It should also be known that we've contracted with a billing agency out of Cedarburg that is one of the best uh, recognized billing agencies around. They specialize in municipal uh, EMS and other municipal bill billing. They have looked at our program. They think that um, the numbers we have laid out are conservative and that uh, they are currently helping us put together uh, programs and billing that are uh, based on best practices from other communities and um, they're helping us with the setup, the training, and the costs, um, or excuse me, the, um, the software um, as far as reporting that will allow us to hit the road running on, on January 1st and should um, help us in the future. They're uh, a very, uh, very efficient organization that is one phone call away and some of the older persons as part of the review of uh, um, request for proposals had a chance to meet some of those people. The City of Sheboygan's operational plan has been approved at both the county and the state level. Commentary at a recent county meeting was that our, the question was asked, was our City of Sheboygan plan held to a higher standard than others? And the answer from the individuals who were holding us to that standard was yes and we passed that muster. We put this newsletter together um, because we're trying to get information out to the public and quite frankly that may be one area where we have not uh, we have not reached the point where we'd like to be. Uh, we would love to be able to spend more time getting out, talking to the people, telling them about our service, uh, providing that information in all different fashions, but quite frankly, we've been focused on putting together a high quality response service that will benefit the community for a long time. I believe that if we build that foundation, the rest of it will come and uh, the uh, community will learn that very quickly and be very proud and very uh, honored of the service that we provide. Uh, we are putting out some uh, of the information that you've received tonight on our website, in the city website. We will be uh, doing a mass email. We're going to try to get some of our people out to some of the larger apartment complexes so they are sh their information is shared with them in the near future. And um, also, I guess I would like to thank all the people within our department that have worked so hard to get this up and running. My staff has worked seven days a week. I've got a deputy chief who is leaving at the end of the year here who would have easily been able to coast into that end of the year that's working seven days a week um, to ensure that this is done properly and the taxpayer is, is protected and... and uh, with uh, cost effectiveness. The rest of my staff, firefighters have stepped forward. Um, they all, we all have a stake in making this thing work right. And that means the council, the mayor, our department and the citizens. And we are committed to doing that and we'll do that. So with that being said, I hope this information is helpful in providing some accuracy to um, what's been out there and um, if you have any questions, I can answer them. Otherwise, um, I'm in my office at any point, and feel free to contact me then. Thank you. Thank you. This is uh, coming Friday at uh, 2 o'clock. My show, 30 Minutes with Your Mayor, will be about the Firebase Ambulance Initiative. Uh, we will have the chief and perhaps some paramedic, paramedic firefighters um, available to discuss what's going to happen at the beginning of the year. Following that uh, show, there will be a 30-minute segment uh, of footage of actual showing of the ambulances and the, uh, the, the fire station and, and the paramedic talking about the excellent state-of-the-art equipment that we have uh, that will be ready to go at the push of a button on January 1st. So I, I ask if anyone has a time Friday at 2 o'clock that, uh, that you should uh, see that. Chief, you forgot something? What I do not. This is, this is perfect because I <coughs> left something up front here. Uh, the one item I did forget to mention, on December 22nd, 
from 1 to 4, we will be having an open house in all of our fire stations. Um, that's in the last page, I believe, that, that you've received there, a second last page. We'll advertise that. We're going to get information out to, to, to the media. But all five fire stations will be open to the public. We'll have our, our personnel in place, our vehicles in place, as they will be on January 1st, so you'll be able to see what, what you can ex expect um, um, for service as of the first of the year. So I just wanted to make sure that that was added. Thank you. The, uh, the chief, our chief, uh, Muskuski also talked about uh, putting together a high quality response service. And uh, that's exactly what he means. Uh, there's work pending now that uh, involves putting together a, a more comprehensive plan for providing a fire base ambulance to neighboring communities which uh, may or may not include uh, the, the town of Wilson. Uh, it, it's, a, it's, it's a good plan, uh, and it, it's a plan that will be open to the public. Uh, the public will have all the input they like. It will probably take about six months to a year to finalize it to make sure that, that not only uh, the people who have uh, serious concerns about it are able to feel comfortable that it's been well thought out, well put together, and at the push of a button, ready to go in, in full force. And the chief, again, has done a remarkable job. And chief, I'd like to personally thank you for, for the amount of time that you put in. Uh, uh, you and your men deserve a lot of credit. Thank you. Just a few more comments here. Uh, from my position, as we go in 2008, uh, the next meeting in January, first I'd like to say, I will be bringing to you a report of everything that we've accomplished in 2007 and some of the things that I hope we can accomplish in 2008. But from my standpoint, what I want to do is be available to provide leadership. From my standpoint, what I want to, let me go back a little bit because I think the public didn't hear. The next meeting in January, I will be sharing with you a report of all our 2007 accomplishments and also a report of some of our projected plans for 2008. From my standpoint, what I want to do is be available and provide leadership uh, to the extent possible that I can without imposing upon the alderman and without compromising your, your ability to, to, to think for yourself um, and, and to, and to pr uh, be responsive to, to your constituents. That's what I want to hope to do. I always want to be available to do that. From your standpoint, I would ask that, that uh, you keep an open mind with a lot of the issues that you, that you debate, uh, that you're sensitive and responsive to your constituents, uh, and that it's easier said than done, but that w you keep your eye on the big picture. There's a big picture out there. And in January and February, hopefully not as late as March, I am going to be meeting with department heads to put together a three-year plan <clears throat> with a, a three-year plan on how, how we would like to proceed with administering government affairs. And that includes public protection and safety, technology, that, that includes everything. How do, how do all the department heads come together and dovetail to create that unit that, 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 that I, I think would be very useful for us uh, as we move forward? I will outline that plan for you uh, in, 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 in February or March. Along in between either that, in between during that time or at the, at the point that I re report to you, I would ask you for your input too, if, if you have any ideas to, as to where you would like to see this go. Finally, I just would like to say one thing. We're all unique people. We all have our abilities and our skills and our talents. But I really believe from the bottom of my heart that we can work together as a team, as a unified council. Again, we don't have to belabor the point. We're not always going to agree on everything. But we have a powerful force here that represents, truly represents, the citizens of Sheboygan. And I ask that you work with me, that you work with each other, and that we move this community forward in a good, positive direction. And with that, I'd like to wish everyone the public, the council, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and a happy new year to you and your family, friends, and neighbors. Thank you. <clears throat> President Hanna, consent agenda. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. That was a long intro. <laughs> yes. Um, <clears throat>
I'd like to uh, I, I move that all short, ROs I be accepted and placed on file, and all RCs be accepted and adopted. I cut it short by five minutes. Second. <laughs> Motion and second to approve the consent agenda. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heideman. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunis. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Boren. Aye. And Bauk. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions 18 20 to be referred. Report of officers 2, 1821 through 1824 to be referred. Resolutions introduced three, 1825 by Alderman Hanna, Boren, Clayunas, and Gisha, authorizing the city of Sheboygan and the county of Sheboygan, Wisconsin, to borrow from the trust funds of the state of Wisconsin the sum of $5,900,000 for the purpose of financing the city's unfunded pension liability and for no other purpose. President Hanna. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. First, I need to ask for suspension of the rules. Second. There's a motion and second to suspend the rules. Is there any objection to suspension? Please explain. Please explain oh, the suspension. Certainly. Uh, there was some timing and some language changes that needed to take place. Uh, so, so Nancy Boss brought that back to us. So there's a sense of urgency that we get this completed. Time sensitive? Yes. Okay. Any other discussion? Then I need a motion to put the resolution upon its passage. Mr. Mayor, I would make a motion to put the resolution 1825 upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion to put resolution upon its passage. There is none. Please call the roll. Hannah? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. And Gisha? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 1826 by Alderman Hanna, Gisha, Rinfleisch, authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into contract for a tax-exempt governmental lease purchase agreement. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. <coughs> Mayor. Again, I need to move to suspend. This relates to the previous resolution. There were some language changes we need to make at the request of the vendor, which have been accomplished, and it is time sensitive. Second. Motion and second to suspend. Is there any objection? There is none. Please proceed with a motion to put it upon its passage. Yes, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second to put 1826 upon its passage under discussion. <clears throat> there being none, please call the roll. Heideman? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Wankaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Falk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. And Hannah? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 1827 lies over. 1828 through 1831 to be referred. Reports of officers 6, 1832 by law and licensing, recommending denying beverage operators license number 4941 based on the applicant's failure to cooperate with the committee. Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of the committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second, under discussion. Under discussion, uh, on this one, Mayor, there was a clerical error. This should be a taxi cab driver license, not a beverage operator's license. Uh, is uh, Carrie uh, Peeney here tonight, please? She's not here, Your Honor. Please proceed. Uh, uh, Ms. Peeney had uh, two opportunities to appear before the committee one by certified mail. Uh, she did not appear, and it was a unanimous uh, vote by the committee to deny the license application. Thank you, Vice President Bourne. Any further discussion mm -hmm. on that uh, 1832? There being none, please call the roll. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunis. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Falk. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. And Heideman. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 1833 by law and licensing, recommending denying beverage operator's license number 7705 based on the applicant's failure to cooperate with the committee. Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of the committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Under discussion is Katrina Haugland here tonight. Is that here, Your Honor? Please proceed. 
Uh, Ms. Hogland also had two opportunities to appear before the committee. Uh, the second one by certified mail. She did not appear, uh, so it was a una unanimous uh, vote of the committee to deny the license. Thank you, Vice President Bourne. Any further discussion? There is none. Please call the roll. Clyunas. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Ba Boren. Aye. Balk. Aye. Yisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heideman. Aye. And Kittleson. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. Report of committees 7, 1835 to be referred. Report of committees it's 8. 1834 you missed. We missed, we missed 1834? There were three of them, yeah. Pardon me? There's, that one needs to go to. That's because Vice President Boren got all three of them before. Okay. <laughs> 1834, Vice President Boren. I think you missed it too, didn't you? <laughs> uh, I recommend that the, or I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second, under discussion. Under discussion is Christopher R. Campbell here tonight. It's not here, Your Honor. Please proceed then. Uh, Mr. Campbell uh, had also had a couple of opportunities to appear before us, uh, did not do so. Also, the applicant's record of uh, repeat uh, law violations uh, came into our decision, and it was a unanimous, unanimous decision by the committee to uh, deny the license application. Thank you, Vice President Borden. Under further discussion, Alderman Rinfleisch? Uh, no, actually, my discussion was pointing out we need to 34 to do. Okay. okay. There is no other discussion. Please call the roll on 1834. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. And Clyunas? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. <clears throat> 1835 to be referred. Report of committees 8, 1836. By finance, recommend and authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2007 budget, establishing revenue and appropriations for funds received by f federal drug forfeitures, donations received from DARE, donations received from Junior Police Academy Program, donations received from Wisconsin Association of Homes and Services for the Aging, overtime reimbursement from the Office of Justice, and donations from the Friends of the Senior Center for Supplies. President Hanna. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I would move that we accept and adopt the RC and put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I just wanted to point out that in the Finance Committee meeting, we had um, an interesting discussion regarding the fact that the uh, item one, federal drug enforcement funds, non-taxpayer dollars, at least not direct taxpayer dollars, contributions to the police department for the DARE program, contributions for the junior police academy, contributions for the tactical team supplies, uh, office of justice grant for the fire department for training purposes, senior center contributions, and I just think that's absolutely wonderful uh, from a public standpoint that that uh, people are stepping up and, and organizations are stepping up and uh, the, uh, the city is grateful for contributions like these. Uh, thank you to them. Thank you. Good, good point. Thank you, Alderman Gisha. Alderman Meyer? Thank you, Your Honor. I, I just have a question. I was under the impression that the D.A.R.E. program no longer exists and I'm just wondering where the funds for this then go or am I wrong and there is a D.A.R.E. program? Okay, this is a donations received from D.A.R.E., not going to D.A.R.E. So it's a donation that was received from there. So apparently there's something still out there that calls itself itself DARE. But under the city, I don't believe we have anything. If you, if you read it, it says donations received from. So we're taking money in, not putting to. money. From the general place to the DARE. Oh, it's a transfer. Right. Okay, okay. Do you need to clarify that, President yes. Hanna? Yes. Yeah. It's, it's my understanding that the, the account title needs to be changed for the DARE awareness program. Okay, okay. That, that the account number is correct, the movement is, but everybody is correct. The DARE does not exist within the city. So we'll get that clarified. I think that can probably come from public protection and safety. Yeah, exactly. May I make a follow-up comment? Okay. Um, secondly, I, I know that the, the public has been very, very generous to the uh, Junior Police Academy program, which is being led by uh, Officer Edson. 
and I would encourage that the enthusiasm in the community uh, keep going. Very good. Thank you, President Hanna. Any further discussion on 1836? There being none, please call the roll. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hanna? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. And Manny? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 1837, by fine hands, recommending authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2007 budget, establishing appropriations for re remodeling in city clerk's office, and appropriation for salaries and human resources, and passing the substitute resolution. President Hanna. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first, I'd like to accept and adopt the RC, and then place the substitute resolution upon its passage. Second. Motion and second, under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunis. Aye. Manny. Aye. And Meyer. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. <clears throat> Excuse me. 1838 by finance recommend and establish, establishing fees for emergency medical and related services provided by the city of Sheboygan in passing the substitute resolution. President Hanna. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would first like the RC to be accepted and adopted and place the substitute resolution upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Rinfleisch? Aye. Excuse me? Aye. Thank you. Ryan? Aye. Wangaman? No. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. And Montemayor? Aye. 12 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries. Ordinances introduced 10, 1839 and 1840 lies over. 1841 to be referred. Matters laid over 11, 1759 communication. Uh, number 470708, submitting a communication from John and Shirley Vertasek, stating that they're upset with all person Meyer's behavior towards all person Ryan and encouraging the council to censure all person Meyer and remove her as chairperson of the Committee of the Whole. President Hanna. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would uh, make a motion to accept and file the document. Second. Motion to file. Under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Same. Motion carries. 1760 RO number 4160708 by the Deputy Finance Director, Treasurer, submitting the list of vouchers amounting to $13,764,689.68 have been audited by the Deputy Finance Director, Treasurer, and paid during October 2007. President Hanna. Mr. Mayor, I'd make a motion to accept the report of officer and place on file. Second. Motion and second to file under discussion. There is none. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 1734, resolution number 1570708 by Alderman Hanna expressing the intent of the Common Council of the City of Sheboygan to exercise its police powers in levying a special assessment for the 2000 cost, 2007 cost of, the, of operating and maintaining the off street parking facilities within the parking assessment district number one. And we have the, uh, the next three, next uh, four, you have 1734 to 1737, if you'd like to take them all. Montana. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to place uh, all four resolutions to be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second to put 1734 to 37 upon its passage under discussion. They deal with the same issue. There is none. Please call the roll. Ryan. Wangaman, Aye. Boren, Aye. Bauk, Aye. Gisha, Aye. Hannah, Aye. Heidemann, Aye. Kittleson, Clayunis, Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. and Rinfleisch. Aye. 13 ayes. Ocean carries. And we got two more for you, President Hannah. 1738, resolution number 161.0708 by Alderman Hannah, Boren, Clayunis, Gisha, and Bauk. Requiring the, uh, requiring the appropriate city department to submit monthly reports on the health care utilization, including a comparison of 2007 and 2008 utilization 
and information on employee utilization <laughs> of the <laughs> wellness program by department categories. Somebody likes that word, utilization. Sure. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would, I would <clears throat> move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second to put 739 upon its passage and utilize the vote to approve it. How's that? Any discussion? Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to mention that uh, and thank uh, Alderperson Kittleson. The uh, Wellness Committee has met twice so far which directly relates to this document. And um, I was unable to make the second meeting to a family issue, but uh, the other <laughs> person, Clyunis, has uh, was elected as chairman of that committee. And I, or, pardon me, Kittleson. What am I doing? Sorry about that. But uh, I wanted to uh, thank her for her leadership and in stepping up and doing that. Uh, I think all of us look forward to uh, working together. Thank you, Alderman Gisher. Alderman Kittleson. Yes. Thank you, Your Honor. And I, I guess just looking at this document, um, knowing that we do want to put this into place, however, that, pe that, that piece that we need to, to start the wellness program is not quite in place. So as soon as that is, then we'll, we'll be able to measure something. But until that time, um, you know, we're just in the forming stages of our wellness program. So just so everyone understands that we do want to measure how it's coming along. But till that time, um, we'll... Uh, We'll be holding off on that. Thank you. Good. Thank you very much, Alderman Kittleson. Any further discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. And Ryan? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 1739, resolution number 1620708 by Alderman Hanna, Boren, Clayunas, Gisha, and Bout accepting the liability insurance proposal from Cities and Villages Mutual Insurance Company and continuing membership in the CIFMIC for 2008 through 2010 based on the premiums guaranteed by CIFMIC for said policy years. President Hanna, one more. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second to put 1739 upon its passage under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clyunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. And Wangaman? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 1753, General Ordinance Number 710708 by Alderman Vanderweel. Rinslice, Ryan, Smith, and Kittleson relating to signs so as to add a deaf child in the area, quote unquote, sign on Ohio Avenue, sign on Ohio Avenue just east of South 17th Street for eastbound traffic. Alderman Rinslice. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the ordinance be put upon its passage. Motion and second to put the uh, 1739 upon its passage. 1753, I should say. Any discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Bauk. Gisha, Aye. Hannah, Aye. Heidemann, Aye. Kittleson, Clayunis, Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Rinfleisch, Ryan, Wangaman, and Bourne. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 1761, General Ordinance Number 720708 by Alderman Vanderweel, Rinfleisch, Ryan, Smith, and Kittleson relating to traffic signs and signals to add stop signs for both north and south, east and west traffic at North 7th Street and Center Avenue. Alderman Rainfleisch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunis. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan, Wangaman, Boren, and Bauk. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters, uh, Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. 1842 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Paul Gottsecker, owner of 821 LLC, requesting an encroachment at 821 and 823 North A Street to construct and maintain awnings. That will be referred to city plan commission. <coughs> 1843 is a general ordinance granting 821 LLC its successors and assigns the privilege of encroaching upon described portions of North 8th Street located at 821-823 North 8th Street in the city for the purpose of constructing and maintaining awnings. 
That will be referred to city plan. 1844 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2008 and June 30, 2009. That will go to law and licensing committee. 1845 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Alderperson Boren along with an article from the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel titled Grafton Hospital gets endorsement. Aurora agrees to pay Grafton $6.8 million in lieu of taxes over the next 25 years. That will be referred to finance. And if, I, if anybody needs that in large, let me know. We can do that at the office. Hold on. Hold on. 18. Hold on, Attorney McKinney, please. Alderman Barnes, did you wish to say something on that? Thank you, Your Honor. I, besides the Finance Committee, I also wanted that to go to planning. Okay. Please make that notation, Council. Thank you. 1845 will go to Finance and Planning Commission. Attorney McLean, proceed. 1846 is a resolution authorizing the purchasing agent to enter into contract for wireless voice and data services. That will refer to Finance. We need a motion to adjourn. So moved. There's a second. Second. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Stand adjourned. Thank you very much. <laughs>